The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. How may a changing climate affect soybean production across Canada? We'll dig into that topic on this episode with my guest, Ward Smith. He and his colleagues at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada are studying agroecosystem models to predict the impact of changing climates on soybean production. Today, we'll discuss what Canadian soybean production could look like in 2030 and beyond. Hi, Ward. Hey, thanks for joining me on the Soybean School. Thanks, uh, Bernard. Pleased to be here. Hey, tell us about your model. How do you assess what growing conditions will be like in in 2030 and 2050? We have a large project underway, led by Dr. Boudon Kian, on assessing crop shifting and expansion for major crops in Canada using process-based crop models. However, as a a first... uh, estimate and to quickly understand climate trends and how they may impact soybeans, we estimated a range of uh, climatic indices which can show the potential future impacts on soybeans historically in 2030 and in 2050. So these indices include things like frost-free period, crop heat units, temperature stress, precipitation, water stress, and amongst others. And they are estimated using climate projections from the latest IPCC scenario assessments using five global climate models. So the study was done to cover the entire country at a fine spatial scale. So I used to say you've looked at places like Humboldt, Saskatchewan, uh, Clinton, Ontario, a lot of different locations. Um, as, you, as you look to 2030, what can we expect in terms of, of temperature and heat stress? Temperature stress in general is expected to decline by 2030 in both eastern and western Canada. And, and this is because Canada is a cold place. Uh, Canada it, it, it will have less uh, uh, cold stress in general. There may be minor increases in uh, uh, heat stress, but more de- declines in cold stress. And beyond thir- 2030, there may be increases in he- temperature stress in eastern Canada due to more stress at time of flowering and pod filling, but this likely won't happen until 2050 in most of western Canada. What about moisture and precipitation, Ward? Um, we always say August rains make grain. You know, can we expect to maintain the moisture the crop requires? The climate models actually suggest that there'll be little change in overall precipitation with about an average 2% increase by 2030. There will be a little bit more of an increase beyond that. Um, Our simple water stress indices do indicate that evapotranspiration would increase under higher temperatures. However, these indices don't include things like the effect of elevated CO2 which is known to improve crop water use efficiency. Also, soybeans have a high root mass near the soil surface. When we get, and when we get August rain, it can uh, take the water up rapidly uh, dur- to provide water to the, to the plant for this critical uh, uh, pod filling stage. And the simple water industry also, I have to say, doesn't include uh, this impact. Let's let's talk about um, management implications for soybeans. You know, will we see an increase in in, in crop heat units? Um, Ward, what about frost-free days? There will certainly be a, a large in, increase in crop heat units across Canada. It's projected that uh, that there will be a significant growing uh, season length increase. increase with higher uh, uh, crop heat units of about 500 by 2030 and 800 by 2050. So these uh, crop heat units are increasing across the country. And it's projected that there will be about a one and a half week uh, greater frost-free period by 2030 uh, across most of Canada. And this will increase by 2050. So this basically means a longer growing season for soybeans and for a lot of other crops. 
Yeah, so let's let's talk about things like planting date and season length, uh, Ward. You know, you've you've got a couple of locations across Canada. Uh, what 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 we see from a from a, a the, the changing landscape when it comes to to the length of season? Well, the planting dates will probably be about one week longer by 2030 relative to historical, and maybe two weeks longer by 2050. So the last frost will also be later, thus there will be a much longer growing season. So uh, I can provide an example uh, regarding uh, uh, planting and maturity dates for Humboldt, Saskatchewan. So Humboldt is in the black tourism of Saskatchewan. This is kind of a more northerly region for agriculture uh, in Saskatchewan, where there's a little more precipitation than in the, in the south. And this and planting date might move from late May uh, in historically to about uh, early May by 2050. And maturity dates could move from mid-September to, to in uh, historically to mid-August by 2050. And thus, in fact, the critical precipitation period for pod filling uh, for that same cultivar may change from uh, August to July. And, but of course, there's always the chance of growing a longer season cultivar. Exactly. So what are the implications for growers and the industry here, Ward? I mean, might we be able to increase maturity groups in some regions? Well, yes, that's possible. And the increased growing period plus the increased temperature will allow for longer season, higher yield cultivars in most areas across Canada. And scientists have worked hard to develop short season cultivars uh, in Canada, but this work may need to focus in the future more toward developing disease resistance, higher yield or higher protein cultivars. And the high variabilities uh, in yields is still expected to continue though in uh, southern regions uh, in western Canada due to water stress. So the brown and dark brown chernozam will still maintain a lot of water stress, perhaps even a little more. But we can expect soybeans to expand in the northern areas in Saskatchewan, where, the, where there is more rainfall and there will continue to be. Uh, however, I should mention that things like uh, diseases, especially root rot disease, is increasing and may further threaten Canadian soybean production in some areas. So just to wrap up, uh, Ward, you know, based on your model, you know, we're, we're seeing manageable heat, you know, uh, sufficient moisture and a longer growing season. You know, in the, in the big picture here, what type of impact could we have uh, on Canadian soybean acres in 2030 and beyond? I mean, it sounds like we've got some growth opportunities here. Yes, it's quite likely that acreage could increase substantially in Western Canada, mainly in the black and dark gray chernozams in the these are the areas with more rainfall now and projected in the future. Uh, there will still be major water stress in southern prairie regions. That's our estimate, of course. Perhaps even more, based on climate indices, expansion into northern regions in the prairies could continue up to 2050 and maybe beyond. So in general, we would expect more area of soybeans in Canada, of course, this depends on, on markets and w whether or not other crops are more beneficial for producers. Expansion may also be possible in some northern regions in Ontario and Quebec. But also, I should note that we, in our estimates right now, we don't extremes include some extreme events such as hail and flooding, which may increase uh, uh, under climate change. And there also, of course, may be disease increased pressure due to uh, diseases such as uh, root, root rot. Well, Ward, hey, some great insights, some great work. Uh, we look forward to seeing what 2030 brings us, uh, we, we, and we look forward to a return visit on the Soybean School from you. Okay, thank you very much, Bernard.